What's up guys? My name is Vince and today I want to share with you what I have recently learned about adding locations to path variable and aliases. I have been trying to learn hacking and it's difficult because I don't really know Linux that well and so I've been trying to learn Linux and hacking at the same time. So today, no hacking, just a little bit of uh, a little bit of Ubuntu to be specific. So I was trying to use the Bleeding Jumbo version of John the Ripper, which if you don't know is a password cracker. Um, and I downloaded the Bleeding Edge Jumbo version. So it's not necessarily the most stable, um, but it has the most features. I got a little greedy and I went for it. And I was trying to use John the Ripper by, you know, typing in John uh, at the terminal, but because John is not mapped to my path, um, that command doesn't work. I, you know, I, I knew that this was a possibility because I'd used Kali Linux before and I type in John and it brings up John the Ripper. And here it's saying, you know, John is not installed. So I started looking into how to map things to path and uh, different possibilities. So my John the Ripper is installed in my opt folder. And uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if this is the best place to store this, but John Hammond said to <laughs> John Hammond said he installs his stuff here, so I figured if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for me. Um, and you can see uh, here in my opt folder, inside of John and run, there is all of the um, actual programs here. And the one that I'd want to call with my path shortcut would be be John. So if I go into this folder, I tell it to look in the folder I'm in and run John, it runs John. Um, however, from anywhere else, I can't get to it. So what I would have to do to run John would be to type out the full path name and I could run it like that, right? That's annoying, and if you want to be able to use it quickly and easily, you don't want to have to type out the full path name every time. So, one way to do this is to create an alias. Now, an alias just replaces um, a keyword that you create with a string. So, if I type alias, and then I can uh, say John equals the full path to John, which is opt John run John. Now, when I type in John, it runs the full path. It, it translates John into this string, which then, you know, runs the full path for me. So this works great. And this is probably what I'm going to do for now. Um, and you know, it works with, uh, with options and password files and all of that because it expands the alias before executing the line. So you can read all about it if you, uh, go to the bash manual page, um, and look at the alias section. Um, but basically this, this alias will be expanded to the full string. Uh, the entire line will be read and then it will be executed. So options and password files and all that stuff that you add on there should work just fine. And I believe you can even use multiple aliases in the same line. Um, you just have to be careful when you're scripting with aliases. So I like this, it works great. Um, how do I add it permanently? Because if you notice, um, if I run John over here, uh, but you know, I'm trying to use the alias, right? It says it doesn't work. So, <clears throat> so to add this permanently, uh, we need to edit. So I'm going to use Vim, which is a text editor, and I'm going to go to my dot profile uh, file, which is located in my home folder. So this will only affect uh, the current user, right? And we're going to edit the file and at the very end of the line I'm gonna press I to enter insert mode and I'm gonna put that same string so alias John is gonna be replaced with opt John run John 
Okay, and then we would hit escape, colon, write, and quit, WQ, and then that would be, that'd be available anywhere now. So if we go back over here, um, well, actually, if we go back over here, it still doesn't work. And the reason is because that profile f um, file has already been sourced when we booted up these shells. So this initial command is has only taken effect in this shell so far. And in this shell, we, ha we would have to source the profile file again. And now we will have that alias uh, in our records. So now when I run John, it pulls it up correctly. Um, so this is great. This is great. And now that I've added it in my profile file, it will be permanent unless I remove it from there. That will um, that will that will work every time. So let's just test it. Uh, if I start a new shell and I do John, I think I might need a restart actually for that to take effect uh, permanently. So okay, yeah, because the profile I think was sourced before the shell started. I'm still learning a lot, um, but I believe with a restart this will work uh, for every new shell from here on out. So the other thing that I was trying to learn was the pathing, right? And the alias was the solution that I found instead of pathing. Um, and now pathing is interesting because it's it's a variable that it basically tells um, your shell where to look for all your commands. So when you type in any command, uh, ls for example, it's actually looking in all of these folders for that command. So what you can do is you can add a folder um, on these in this path and then your your shell will look for the command uh, within those folders so for example I was doing some testing over here earlier and you'll notice that I have um, a little script that I made here in my John folder which is called env script sh right so if I if I'm in here and I run env script sh, it echoes some value, right? Now obviously that won't work uh, from a different folder because it won't find it. Um, I told it directly to look in this folder by doing dot forward slash. Um, so what we could do is we could set our path equal to the current path and then we could add opt john run now when we echo our path we can see before it ended with snap bin now we have snap bin opt john run we don't need to source it because it's already in there so let's just try running env script sh and there we go it works so this also is is not permanent um if we wanted to make this permanent uh again we would have to add this line to our profile there's a lot of different places you can add this um and that i i have yet to fully understand all the different um all the different files that are read and when they're read and which one you'd want to add it to um, but from what I what I've read so far, uh, bash RC is a good place to add it if you don't know where to add it. So we could just do vim dot bash RC, and then you could add in your. Let's see. So this is a big file. It's doing a lot, but I believe if you just add that that uh, line at the end here, um, you know, path equals. We need the quotes, I believe. Path equals path, um, and then colon because that that separates each each directory. Um, opt John run, John, or opt John run, right? So that will give you access to this entire file or this entire directory. So I'm not gonna save that because I already have it in my. I'm gonna do exclamation mark to overwrite. Okay, so I have this in my path, right? 
The part I have not been able to figure out yet is why this doesn't find John. Okay, that's <laughs> that's a bad example because I already gave it an alias. So let's unalias John. Uh, so now I can't find John, right? So that that found it because of the alias. But what I want it to find is from the path. Now I can still find my environment script.sh, some value, and that is in the same folder, right, right here, uh, it's in the same folder as John. And I know John works, um, but for some reason John doesn't work with adding to the path variable. So the workaround I found right now is the alias, and if you're like me and you decided to try to learn hacking on Ubuntu instead of Kali, hopefully this is helpful to you. The reason I did that was because I wanted to have these issues. I wanted to be forced to uh, really dig down deep and learn how to configure and really learn how um, Ubuntu and Linux work and not just use a bunch of pre-made, uh, pre-assembled um, scripts to, to learn hacking, even though I'm, I'm still doing that to a, to a large extent. Um, but yeah, I hope this is helpful for you guys. I've been having a lot of fun uh, on Try Hack Me, and I'm just, you know, I'm learning. Uh, there's a long ways to go, but I just wanted to share that, guy, share that with you guys because I thought that might be helpful. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe, leave a like, do all that cool stuff. Bye.